Well, what have we beer? I mean here. Sorry, I was staring longingly at this gorgeous 24-ounce tall boy of America's beer, Pabst Blue Ribbon, the preferred beer of World War II veterans. I wasn't staring at it because I longed to drink it. I was staring because I want to be it. I would honestly rather be anywhere as anything doing any other thing than what I've just done. I would rather have a soccer team of cleat-shoed, jolly green giantesses tap dance over my scrotum while being forced to drink turpentine and sing the Macarena than to have to have done what I just did, which is basically the same thing. I watched the mind-scramblingly incongruous season and hopefully series finale of the quote-unquote television show known as She-Hulk. Sweet and gentle Jesus dipped in napalm. What in the actual mother-loving fuck is with this show? It seems intent, nay, obsessed with capsizing the boat, which is already sinking. Do the writers of this nauseating turd-scented brooch even care? The question is rhetorical, because obviously they don't. They seem also incapable of humility, oblivious to the concept of consistency, and in all ways alienated from anything approaching the gift which a large percentage of those who engage in artistic endeavors refer to as talent. So far we've grappled with such universal and hard-hitting topics as mentally managing life-changing experiences and physical transformations beyond our control. No real adversity there, as evidenced by the first episode. Having to find a new job, again, not an actual problem. A quick two-minute montage handled that. Having to defend a monstrous supervillain in court parole hearings. That one also sorts itself out through absolutely no effort on Jen's part. Next, we played the dating game. How hard is it to find a date when you're an eight-foot-tall goddess and your alias is a reasonably successful and attractive attorney, you might ask sarcastically? About as tough as trying to walk and chew bubblegum. At least that's what reality would be if reality were to venture within a hundred miles of this brain-cratering Chinese finger cuff of a series. Personal copyright infringement? Who hasn't been at the fuzzy end of a superhuman stealing your commonly referred to stage name and creating a makeup line lollipop? Jen takes on a client, Wong, who is suing a magician charlatan who happens to have stolen a sling ring from Camartage. Riveting stuff in so prescient in modern times. She also continues to attempt to find a date. I don't know which activates my gag reflex more, the A plot or the B plot. Attending a wedding. Oh, girl, don't get me started on choosing a dress to wear as an eight-foot-tall burly behemoth with an ass that can clap thunder when everything clashes with green. In spectacularly nonsensical fashion, Jen then attempts to track down the recently and inexplicably paroled Emil Blonsky, a.k.a. Abomination, and is forced to juggle being ghosted by one of several guys that she's managed to wrangle into the sack. She's then treated to a weekend countryside therapy retreat hosted by Blonsky, who apparently is also a holistic healer when he's not wreaking havoc and leveling cities. We can all relate to that, right? She then takes on a mesmerizingly idiotic case involving a low-level frog-themed super-asshole and his lawsuit against the company that manufactured his malfunctioning supersuit. That one hits pretty close to home. As a result of her incredibly monumental efforts in the arena of quote-unquote lawyering, she wins the coveted Female of the Year Award. I assume the committee that votes on this award consists of just one person, Jessica Gao. During this quote-unquote prestigious event, by the way, there's a worldwide quotation mark shortage at the moment, mostly due to this fucking insipid show, so I'll try to refrain from further abuse of that particular punctuation. Anywho, during this gala affair, Intelligentsia broadcasts hacked footage of Jen fucking Ghost Guy. She hulks out, destroys some dinner tables, and is somehow arrested. Could anything be more relatable? The final nail, er, episode, starts with a rather clever nod to the 1970s Incredible Hulk television series. I like this bit a lot, and I wish this had been the format for the entire series. Low-budget film stock, practical makeup and visual effects. Sure, it looks dated, but it has a campy charm that this show is completely devoid of. Alas, they immediately revert back to their modern-day, basic bitch, flat-as-a-pancake format as Jenna wakes realizing it was all just a dream. She is locked in one of the monster-proof cells that the show has doled out from time to time, and is approached by her legal counsel. And I use that term generously. 
She tells them that they need to identify everyone from Reddit, sorry, Intelligentsia, who hacked her account. Her team of crack lawyers then explain to her why this is a useless gesture. For her destruction of the banquet hall, the feds have offered her a plea deal. She may no longer turn into the Hulk. As stupid as that sounds, it's nothing compared to what follows. Jen's only friend and her chauvinistic and mentally retarded co-worker somehow, through the magic of contrived convenience, managed to obtain an invitation to a gathering of like-minded, she-hulk-hating miscreants, hosted by none other than the creator of Intelligentsia. At the event, it is revealed that Todd Phelps, remember that geek that she dated in episode 5? Me neither. Is the quote-unquote brains... I swear, that's the last time. Behind Intelligentsia and a guest speaker is revealed. Emil Blonsky in Abomination Form. Side note, the CGI budget must have run out last episode because this isn't even fan film quality level rendering. Real Hulk interrupts the proceeding and begins to fight Abomination. Titania appears because she's the kitchen sink of major characters this season and we've got to have her here for reasons unknown. If all of that is concentrated cringe, what happens next is an absolute cringe diamond carved to Pink Panther-like perfection, shimmering ethereally in the billion-dollar-plus at the ever-tweaking ass-end of the Disney streaming service Maelstrom. Jen speaks the following words directly into camera. The storyline is a mess. None of this makes any sense. And I'm at a loss for words. Are... Are the writers really trying to recuse themselves of writing complete and total shit by acknowledging that it is, in fact, complete and total shit? Is that how it works? Can you simply vomit onto the screen an entire season's worth of utter nonsense and then hand wave it away with one embarrassing aside from the main character? It's a bold strategy, Cotton. Let's see how it plays out. The screen cuts abruptly to the Disney Plus interface. She-Hulk crashes from one show icon into another and comes to rest in our dimension, the dimension where She-Hulk is a shitty show, and even the main character knows it. She plods across the studio compound and confronts the writer's room, giving them a piece of her mind, and an extra royalty paycheck for each one for being on screen. Clever. She then confronts Kevin, the AI machine that runs the studio and has created the show. This entire premise of breaking not only the fourth wall, but I guess the fifth, possibly the sixth, could possibly work in another show where the writing was tight and linear up to that point. In this batshit hodgepodge of nonsensical and ridiculously trite plot soup, it really just comes off as embarrassing, uninspired, and frankly insultingly lazy on the part of the writers. It's painfully obvious that they couldn't come up with a way to wrap up even one of the plot lines they'd unraveled throughout these nine abusively insipid episodes, so they've taken a hard 90-degree turn into the meta. What a joke. And so, here we are, dear viewers, at the end of all things, frosted breath lingering frightened in the air, as the She-Hulk experience breaks the fourth, fifth, and sixth walls of cinematic reality, attempting to find purchase in the world of slippery slopes and wackadoo logic. My friends, we are snowboarding with reckless abandon down the mind-numbing moguls of modern feminist self-loathing. I need a shot of whiskey and a chicken salad sandwich. Toot sweet.